Well, it's day three, Thursday morning. The great shuffle's taking place and the cream is starting to rise to the top, Liz. You know, it sure has, Billy. These guys are working hard, but some other guys are working a little bit harder. Well, we're gonna go right now and we're gonna take you over to one of the courses that we're gonna see. Today, we'll give you some action. Haven't shown you much of the advanced groups, but today it's a pool all day long. And we're gonna start at Chala this morning. Yeah, that's right. You know, there's four guys that worked hard to get there. I know Kenny Glassman sitting in the lead will be able to see what he has to throw and see if he can maintain his lead throughout the day. Also, I think that we should go take a look at Ellison Park. I know we've got a good course look put together. It's one of their oldest parks in this area. I know I'm excited to see what it's all about. Well, here's Ellison Park, one of the courses for the 2011 AM World Championships. Well, we're at beautiful Ellison Park, and as you can see, there is plenty of elevation here. It's a nice 18 hole track. Let's take a look at Ellison Park, part of the 2011 AM Worlds in Rochester. Hole number two, 390 feet, straight uphill, playing every bit of 450 feet. A demanding tee shot through the right gap will get you an opportunity to get over for an easy three. The locals will tell you a power roller will get you a putt on this uphill monster. Hole number six, 190 feet, a hole you absolutely must get, but where you have to take gravity into effect. A little too high here, and you'll end up well outside the circle, putting uphill. Hole number seven, absolutely beautiful, 528 feet and a legitimate par three. Downhill all the way, you really get the feel for the elevation here at Ellison with this hole. The OB line behind is a creek, and a lot of guys will end up on the right-hand side or short left, but this is a very birdieable hole. Hole number nine, 470 feet, par four straight back uphill. This is a two-shot hole that you want to throw a big hyzer, but you can drift over into Seven's fairway, which makes the upshot a little more difficult. Hole number 11, 195 feet, par three. Again, straight uphill, playing every bit of 250 feet. A well-guarded green will force you to throw a perfect shot to have an opportunity for a two on this hole. Hole number 13, 600 feet, par four. Absolutely beautiful. An opportunity to put a roller on the ground as the OB right is treacherous. You do not want to end up there. The basket is at the end of a beautiful grove of pines. This is one dangerous hole, but if you can card a three here, you can get a stroke on your group and possibly the field. Hole number 16, 320 feet, downhill, playing only about 280 feet. There is an opportunity to come in low on the right gap or high with a stall shot. A lefty or a big sidearm player has a spike shot right into the green. Hole number 17, 590 feet, par four, absolutely beautiful. A demanding tee shot with a ceiling that forces you to throw a flex shot and allow your disc to come back to the left and fight against gravity. If you can get in the right position, you can almost see the basket on the second shot, which is well guarded to a runaway green. Well, Ellison Park, another beautiful piece of property they've got in the worlds this year. Oh yeah, there's sloping hills. There's going to be all sorts of challenges that the lead card's going to be faced with today. They're going to have to really stick to their putting game and, and make a plan before they go out there today. Well, before they go there, they're gonna go to the most heralded course in the area, part of the 99 oh, Worlds. It's beautiful, Billy. Trees have grown 12 years since they've been there. This is some live action with the lead card from Thursday morning, the fourth round of competition at Chalai Widener Park. 
Well, here we are Thursday morning. <laughs> the great shuffle has happened, Liz, and here's the cream rising right to the top oh, here. Oh yeah, you better believe it, Billy. We got Kenny Glassman, Dan Hastings, Pete Ulibari, and Cameron Cole Glazier on the top card of the A pool. Well, this is lead card action. We are at Chala Widener Park, and this is hole number 12. What a beautiful hole, little 223 footer. You can see that OB runs down the right side the whole way, and what a beautiful, well-protected green, Liz. Oh yeah, Billy, you know, there's some low cover on the ceiling, some large, very bushy apple trees that are going to protect the high line. You're going to have to find a way to get in there, but it's not coming from the top. Well, it looks like Kenny Glassman in the lead. What a great feeling to be in the lead. Well, I take that back. There comes Pete Ulibari to the tee first. Well, he had a pretty good uh, hole just now. I think he bested everyone and took possibly maybe even a four on that 911 foot hole. Well, Pete looking I don't know if we've ever had brother world champions or not, but his younger brother, Paul Ulibari, a world champion and a tour pro now. Oh yeah, and I know he's got lots of love coming his way from his little brother. Well, how about that? We could have our first brother tandem team that I know of as AM world champions several years apart. And this is the older brother. You would think it would be the younger brother coming in. Maybe Paul just got him into the sport, who knows? This is Pete Ulibari. It's a little 225 footer, but it is tricky, Liz. You know, Billy, it's just, it's threatening to rain. The wind is starting to pick up just a little bit. All sorts of obstacles on this hole. He chooses the big Anheuser safety shot, not dealing with any OB, not in the circle. Well, he's gonna have a putt, but that's well outside the circle, and he is certainly gonna have to deal with the apple tree. Okay, this is Cameron Cole Glazier. He is coming in at the bottom man on this card, but he's making his way right back up in there, Billy. Oh yeah, he had a substantial, some substantial ground to make up and he has already done it. Look at this oh, side. Taking an inside sidearm line. Needs to clear the fence. Oh, what a great shot. He is all of six feet away. That is a park job. Nice job, Cameron. Next up on the tee, Kenny Glassman. You know, Billy, did you hear that he threw in a 200 foot eagle on hole six so far today? Wow, that is just amazing. The guy is in the zone. You know, I talked to him earlier. He said he's playing safe. There's no reason for him to take any risks right now. Well, now he's backing off. He's seeing the, another group coming on the tee behind this, this green. Doesn't want to get interrupted. Here's Kenny Glassman, your current leader. Oh, the straight at it line. How risky. And he goes underneath the split rail fence inside the circle about 20 feet away. Well, he might say he's playing safe, but he's got to have confidence because that was a high risk shot, just like you called. I don't know, sometimes you put that mid-range in your hand, it just feels good. Well, here's one of the local favorites and seems to be getting himself in position to make a move tomorrow and into the finals. This is Dan Hastings. Yeah, Dan Hastings, he's been playing all sorts of open events. He's been turning down cash, hopefully, to, so he can rise to the top of the Amateur World Championships. Well, he's getting himself in position. He's on the lead card here Thursday morning, but there's still a lot of golf left. Well, that's Gotta deep. get over the tree. Oh, trying to get on side in that green. He found some trouble at the very end here. Well, he's got an open to the basket. If he wants a birdie, he's just got to bang a sweet little 35 footer. Well, here's Pete Ulibari. That's right, Billy. He is a tester puttier. He may have a low ceiling to contend with. I'm not sure if he's going to set it up in the air or beeline putt it, but. He's gonna walk it off so he knows what he has to deal with. I like this move. He's uh, he's gonna pace it off. He's gonna see what the danger is behind it. You can definitely see those white stakes up in there. It'd be hard to get to him, but if he went this super aggressive, he just wants to see what the results could be. Yeah, that he's a smart player. He is from a family of smart players. Paul Ulibarri being his younger brother, rooting him on today, that's for sure. Yeah, here's PD's ready now. This is a birdie putt on hole number 12. Oh, a little interruption from a tee pad on his left. Well, we're going to see what his nerves are made of because he was ready to go. And it looks like he's going to start his routine over, and that is the first correct thing you want to do. All right, settling back down into his rhythm. It's 223 feet. I know that players want to get a birdie on this. Oh, challenges the ceiling, has no trouble, but goes a little bit low. Should be able to get his easy three there, but... You know, like you said, 223 feet when you're sitting in the room, you're game planning. Oh, you're going to write a two down on this thing every time, Liz. That's right. Let's go pick up Dan Hastings' putt. He's the next one out. He's on the edge of the green. He's going to have an almost an 
an elevated putt here, a de-elevated putt, Billy? There's yeah, he's some gonna, sort of ridge. He's going to be just a little bit of elevation up, probably a foot and a half or so, but he's got a nice open lane to the basket, whereas Pete was looking at some, some of the apple tree limbs coming down. He's actually got an open lane. He's probably taken this putt a few times. Well, Dan Hastings, local hero here in Rochester, New York. Let's see if he can can this 35-footer for a deuce. Oh, great putt by Dan Hastings. That was money. And he's looking comfortable out here in his element. Yes, sir. Okay, now as the two other boys step up here, they're considerably closer, both of them inside of the circle. Took two completely different lines. Kenny Glassman with a direct line. I believe he came underneath the he fence did. trail. Underneath, you bet. So he's looking here to get a big birdie. As he played hole 11 about as safe as he could play, Liz, he said he'd been having some problems in practice and he didn't want to get anywhere near those white stakes. Very smart. All right, the rain is picking up just a little bit out here, but for the most part, it seems to just be a nice cool down as compared to the other days this week. Well, what a wonderful day for golf. These guys have been fortunate oh, all week. two for Kenny Glassman there. He's answering the call. He's not gonna let his lead slip away. Well, it's hard to hold on to that lead for three or four days. And that's oh, what he's gonna try to do. Well, that's what these amateurs wanna feel. They wanna feel the pressure of playing like a pro. And Cameron, after a great shot, closest to the pin. That young man's gonna card it too. He's probably gonna take the box here as Pete Ulibar is gonna move in the round back, finish up the par, and cost the group a star frame. All right, that seemed pretty easy. Let's go check out some more action of the lead card at 2011 Amateur and Junior World Championships here in Rochester, New York. Okay, we've caught up with the lead card again on hole number 50, or I'm sorry, hole number 16, Billy. Yeah, this, this is a beautiful hole, Liz. They've got the wood chips sort of as bunkers, little 265 footer. Yeah, and with these wood chips as bunkers, it forces you to come up and down into the green. There's no running it right up in because you'll get stopped. Well, Kenny Glassman, it looks like he's looking at a spike hyzer possibly. Oh yeah, it's up in the air. Well, that's got to get down. The wind's going to push that well left. Oh. oh. Caught a little flare skip off that wood pile and went even a little bit further. Boy, most of the time they dig in, but that was definitely a flare skip. Now here's Pete Ulibarri. It looks like he's looking at maybe a different line, maybe either a sidearm possibly. No, he's got a backhand in his. You know, it's a relatively easy shot. There's only a few things to avoid. It's just those elevated mulch piles at the end that you have to get up and over. Well, relatively easy uh, is a term <laughs> we won't put the pressure on because, boy, I tell you, when you're in the lead card of the world, nothing seems to be easy, but that's going to be know. an easy birdie for Pete sure Ulibar. made it look easy to me, Billy. Good call, Lizzie. I sure hate it when I'm wrong. Get used to it. <laughs> boy, he's a tall drink of water. Yeah, Cameron Cole Glazier is a very tall, skinny drink of water, and he knows it, too. Yeah, but that's all right. He seems like he's playing confidently. He's Big really sweeping hyzer, not taking any of those trees on the right-hand side into play. Mm, just a little bit short. I think he's in between the bunkers, so I don't think he's going to have to put over one. But he's going to be outside the circle's edge, and now, after just frustrating. I mean, he's a local. You know, he knows these holes better than anybody. Like you said, he's turned down a couple thousand dollars already in pro events. You bet, Billy. He's three strokes off the lead right now. Kenny Glassman's at ten down. He's at seven down. This is Dan Hastings we're talking about. That's right. No, he's he took a bogey on the last hole, but let's see if he can answer it. And get, I like this get one, that Liz. Birdie. He didn't need to walk down here. He put it right next to the bucket. Yeah, he saved his energy. He's going to get a stroke back on at least one of these guys, unless he can bang a 40-footer. This is the lead card action from Chala Thursday morning here at the 2011 Amateur World Championships. Well, we saw uh, Kenny pace off there. It looked like he went about four paces outside the circle, so this would be somewhere in the neighborhood of a 45-footer. You know, he's got the lead right now. He doesn't, I mean, if he gives back a stroke here, it's not gonna hurt him too much, but boy, it sure would be nice to keep playing with these birdies. Oh, it's up and he crashed that putt in, Billy. He's 
There's, just, there's no joking on this game. I'll tell you, man, that's how you get the lead and keep the lead. That is a huge pop because you know those guys parked were thinking, well, I got one on him now. Oh, yeah, million Camera is rolling and everything. He has got a nerves of steel. All right, I believe it's Cameron Coldglazer. He's a little bit short, a little bit right, but he's near the circle's edge. Well, with that huge putt there, they're set up for a star frame. Oh, And gets... I had to say it. Well, he just went outside the back of the basket. It was a good shot, but just that one inch makes a difference. There you can see Pete Ulibarri looking to move in now. As he's not going to have very much to go. He's got probably maybe eight, 10 feet for his bird. And then Dan Hastings will be moving in. He is absolutely parked. I like this routine that Pete has. He, every time he does it, it seems to calm him down. Really comfortable. It is one of the most important things in your golf game, and that is a routine. It gets you comfortable, gets you in your own backyard. And All right, Pete Ulibarri for an easy two. That's where Pete's at right now, carding another easy two. Dan Hastings gonna move in. Look at that smile on his face. <laughs> easy two. Cleans up that four that he just had. That's whole 16, some lead card action here at Chala. Well, the competition is really heating up. I mean, these guys are playing some great golf. Yeah, that Kenny Glassman sure is impressive. I tell you what, he's one a heck of a player this week. Well, Kenny's impressive, but I'm still looking at Dan Hastings to try and make that move. He's where he wants to be. He's within reach of Kenny Glassman. We've still got some rounds left. That was the fourth round from Chala. We'll get you out to some more live action, but first, Voodoo, one of our sponsors, has given us three beautiful discs. Take a look at these discs. And if you'd like to have one of these new tattoo technology, let's tell them exactly what they got to do. All right, guys, it's simple. If you want a chance of winning one of these three voodoo discs, all you got to do is fan Clash DVD on Facebook. And if you get yourself fanned by Sunday night, you could be one of the lucky ones to walk home with one of these discs. Well, for something special now, here's the Clash Meet the Players of the 2011 AM World Championships. <laughs> Hi, uh, Mary Opiella, 14405 is my PDGA number. I'm from Eden, New York. Uh, th thanks to Dougie O, he's the reason I'm here. I'm Sherry Jasenbach. I'm from three miles west of Mary in Lakeview, New York. I'm 26908, and I love you, David. Thank you for letting me be here. Hi, I'm Joy Stats Henson. My number is 37663. I'm from Dallas, Texas. This is my first Worlds. And uh, I'm going to say hi to my new husband, Don, back home. Paul Priest, North Carolina. David Weaver, North Carolina. I'd like to give out a shout out to my future wife, Jenna McDaniel. Spencer Wilkin, Illinois. Billy Dunn, Connecticut. Woo! Beautiful. Hi, my name is Erin Tibnan. I'm from Worcester, Massachusetts, home of Maple Hill, the Vibram Open. I'm here for my first world and I'm having fun coming back from the tail end, but I'm going to make it up to the top, hopefully. <laughs> for sure. And I'm Colleen Thompson. I'm from Lamont, Illinois, a little town and by Chicago, but uh, taking doubles started me off good and I'm hoping to keep it up this week with my money putters. ABC Plastics the way to go. <laughs> I'm Candy Rogie from Tampa, Florida. Having a great time. It's my second time at Worlds. Um, everything is wonderful here. The weather's holding up. My number is 37777. 4589. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Roger Gagnon, PDJ42254. I'm from Newton, Massachusetts. Want to give a shout out to NIFA. My name is Aaron Rothrock, PDGA number 45117. I am actually grew up in the Rochester area, but now I'm located in Cary, North Carolina. And I'd just like to tell my wife and my daughter that I love them. My name is Chris Orlog. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. PDGA number 37838. Give a shout out to the Minneapolis, Minnesota represent and flight club. Matt Travis, PDGA number 29292. I'd like to give a shout out to Warp Disc Golf. 
you. Hi, I'm Sandal Parrish. I'm from Philadelphia. PDGA number 25408. Shout out to Sedgley Woods. Woohoo! Hi, I'm Karen Shearer from Carlisle, Pennsylvania. My number is 36022. Shout out to uh, family and friends at home. What's up? Tracy Crabtree, 26181, out of Lexington, Kentucky, home of the bluegrass, BDGA rocks. My name is Robbie Ehrman, 20177. I'm from Millington, Tennessee. I'd like to give a shout out to everybody in Southern Nationals. James Porter from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, BDGA number is 3835. I'd give a shout out to Twisted Flyer and my boy T Dog Miller, Terry Miller, out of Wisconsin. Lifetime to sports. Uh, Cameron Colglazer, 47407, Mobile, Alabama. And I want to give a shout out to the Southern Nationals and Roll Tide. I was excited to finally Hi, I'm Kenny Glassman from Gurney, Illinois, PDGA number 30060. I'd like to give a shout out to Discontinuum Disc Golf Club, Paragon Disc Golf, and all my homies back at home. Thanks. Stuart Crawl, PDGA number 13321. Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Big shout out to Doug Singleton and Bill Jacobson. Jim Fasu, Asheville, North Carolina. 34585. Say hello to Bob Fisher and Chris Ellis. Oh my, let's see. I'm Marv Adams. <laughs> 9767 from Kent, Washington. And I'm happy to be here. Say hi to Stuart and Jim. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Guys. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Oh, the disc golf family. What an intricate group of human beings we you are. Know, we sure are diverse too, Billy. That is one thing that keeps us all coming back out. We get to meet new people and people are so friendly out here. I just, I can't get enough of the Meet the Players segment. Well, you like the players? We got the best ones here this week for you. We told you we was gonna show you some lead card action. This is the A pool from Ellison Park, Thursday afternoon, the fifth round of the Worlds. Here's some live lead card action for you. Well, here we are, Thursday afternoon, fifth round action at the World Championships. What a beautiful day. This is Ellison Park we're at, Liz. Oh, yeah, and you know, these guys have just been issued the two-minute warning, so we get to start seeing action happen at any time. You know, Billy, this is the oldest park in all of Monroe County. Wow, when was it put in? I mean, oldest. Oldest, 1926. It's nearly 500 acres. Well, I know it's the oldest disc golf course in the area as well. Uh, I think that it's been in for maybe 20 years at least. Yeah, I think I 1989. Well, what we've got for you this afternoon, we've got the oldest course, we've got the oldest park, we've got the newest lead card. Kenny Glassman at 15 under, Dan Hastings at 12 under, tied with Paul Ulibarri at 12 under. Ah, uh, be careful, Billy, that's Pete Ulibarri, that's his oh, older brother. Good call, Liz. And Dylan Horst moving into the lead card here, and he's sitting at 10 under. This first hole, a beautiful shot, Liz, 350 feet and lots of danger. Well, like almost all the holes here, Billy, there is a... Well, there's tee off. Again, like I said, this entire course is on a sloping plane. You know, every green is fast. They had to take special measures just to level out the tee pads, I'm sure. Well, leading his way to the tee right now, this is the leader of the AM World Championship. He's the big dog out of the 440 plus here. This is Kenny Glassman. You know, it's been sort of raining and drizzling the last half hour, but it seems to have stopped. I know, what kind of luck is that? That's lead card magic. It is the most temperate of all the days. It feels great to stand outside. Well, I like it, Liz, it needs to release. Oh, it sure did, it's up there. He's got a putt for a two. And he's gonna be at the circle's edge and the tee pads are a little slick. This is short grass. It's gonna be just a little slick, so they're gonna have to take that into account. And now Pete Ulibarri, you know, I talked to Pete and he was a big BMXer growing up and he said his body just couldn't take it anymore. And he really wanted to get to know his, his younger brother, 10 years younger as Paul wow. and his father. Apparently Paul and his father played quite a bit of golf and now Pete jumped in. And so they are just a family of golfers. And Pete said it's almost surreal being here. He dreamed about being here and trying to be a world champion like his younger brother. And he's got a chance to do it if he can keep playing like this. You know, Billy, he sure does. He's giving it all he's got right now. Yeah, I like his I like his tactics. He's focused. He's really taking his time. He's not gonna let anything in his way. Well, he's got enough speed on that one. That just needs to hook up. Oh, it's 
a little bit shorter of Kenny's, but he's right up there. Now he caught just a little something on the way out. And now here's the guy who everybody locally, when we got here, said was going to win. They just knew it. This is Dan Hastings. He's a local stud. Yeah, and not only that, Billy, he has taken into account that the tee pads are slippery. He has laid down a towel to give himself a little bit more grip at the end of his shot. I really like that. He's penetrating out, and that is going oh, to have yeah, plenty that, to get there. He's, get he's the basket. Running. Ooh. I Boy. tell you, he's going to leave himself a little bit of a little bit of a putt, but he sure did run at those chains. Boy, what a great start now. And if he's got that kind of a sidearm out here, this could be that round he makes his move. He's tied for second now, three back in. Well, check this guy out. This is Dylan Horst. He shot a 10-27 rated round the last round over at Chai Lai. And that was a 49, Billy. He got himself on some lead card action. Oh, that is screaming. That's got to hook up, Liz. That's got away from him. Oh, wow. He can throw that a long way. It's too bad it's in the wrong way. Boy, that is every bit of 400 foot plus. He's going to have about an 80 to 90 footer coming back. This is lead card action from the Am World Championships. This is Ellison Park, the oldest park and the oldest course here. Okay, we're down here at the putting green in hole number one, Ellison Park. This is Dylan Horse. He got every little bit of that drive, but fortunately he's he's out. He's got a long approach shot. That's what you're looking to do. You want to get this first hole out of the way. You don't want a tough putt for a par. And the drive got away, so that was a really good up shot. That was a little bit of smart golf played by Dylan Horse there. Pete Ulbari now. He's going to run his putt. Oh, I like it. Oh, still leaving himself safe. He'll have no problem getting a three out of that shot. Well, that's giving it an effort. This is the first hole here. This is the lead card, and we've got a little gallery starting to mount around the back side of the hill. Okay, looks like Kenny Glassman's going to attempt his putt here. No, I believe Dan is out. He is oh, along okay. that back side. And, you know, I mean, he, he did oh, definitely he ran have that. Answer, He's got to have a distinct advantage. Uh, I asked him if he had played Chala at least 20 times, and he sort of laughed and said, maybe in a week. <laughs> I, think, I think he feels plenty confident coming into this. Ooh. Little you slick, know? you know, and, that, and the footing and the handwork right now. I mean, does it affect you very much right now, you know, in this light kind of rain, Liz? You know, you just got to keep towels on you. You got to keep calm. You have to keep focused. You have to be aware of everything that's going on. Well, I can see Kenny Glassman. He's got a towel right there attached to his waist and he's gonna keep keep that putter dry. This is the putting range. We seen him make some earlier today. And oh yeah, and you know his strategy is to just, you know, keep his lead. He doesn't have to make any huge strides ahead here. Just great job by Kenny Glassman. Playing smart, playing safe, and gaining strokes on the field. These guys better take note. All right. These boys have to fin or clean up their shots, get their three and move on to the next hole. Well, that's going to give him a four-stroke lead right off of the bat, and confidence is what you want to start around with for sure. There's Dan Hastings. Could be a little bit of a tester, but I think he's got it. Confident stroke there. Now Pete will move in. Pete's only about eight, ten feet away, and then Dylan will tap in. Kenny Glassman increasing his lead to four over second place here on the first hole. This is some action from the fifth round at Ellison Park Thursday afternoon. I'm going to say it's about 78 degrees, maybe somewhere in that area. Light mist. What another beautiful day for golf, Liz. Absolutely, Billy. Low humidity. This is going to be an awesome afternoon. Well, here we are, Liz. Oh, look at this monster hole, Billy. This one is fun. Number seven, 528. That's Pete Ulibarri on the tee, and they're just going to unleash. Oh, yeah, they're feeling good. All four of them take a birdie on the holes prior to this one. All right, it's up in the air. This thing is fun to watch fall down, it's but is it going to fall at the right angle? I think going to come up short. You're absolutely right. He is a good 70 feet short. Now, what is the player thinking about when they're throwing this much downhill, Billy? Well, you know, I think the big mistake he made, and he's from Arizona, not a lot of hills out there, is you want to get going with the plane of the earth itself. If you throw that thing out and suddenly you're 70 feet off of the ground and you start losing speed. Yeah, you're just going to fall right out of the sky, right? You are correct. Now, here's Kenny Glassman. 
And you can see he's throwing it nose up, and this will not have enough to get there. No, absolutely not. And it's probably going to end up far left as well. Well, and he's doing exactly what he said he wanted to do. He's sort of playing safe, smart. He's down there near the green. Yeah, that's right. Dan Hastings here making a big putt. Two. Yeah. All right. Dan might be really. a smart player. He every tee pad here is a little bit wet because it was a little bit moist earlier today. Well, they brought in the flat pads and they look really great. They've got them all encased in with wood, but we had just enough rain to slick them up about an hour ago. I expect him to give himself a great opportunity for a birdie on this hole. Really yeah, I think it's, it it's definitely far enough right and it's got enough glide on it. It just has to I fall out of the I think it's too long, sky. Liz. Oh, I don't know, Billy. I think it's going to be right under the basket. Oh. You are absolutely right. I didn't. Those limbs extend far out past the fairway. Well, I mean, it's 528, but it's probably only playing about 370. And these guys are pumped up. They've been waiting to get on, on this hole. And he oh. just hit it good that time. He just cleaned it. All right, this is Dylan Horst. He's got a ton of power. Let's he see what he throttles back. You know, absolutely. He might even have one in his hands. Ooh, he's thinking about... Well, what they're going to try to do in one of the mistakes that that the younger player will make is they're going to try and throw it out wide enough to compensate. And they're bringing in a lot of math when they do that. The best thing they can do is throw a direct line. This is huge. All this right, that looks similar to Dan Hastings' line, but a little bit shorter. Well, it's a long hole, long walk down there, too. Well, if you don't know how to play elevation, it is as hard to learn as wind. We're going to let them walk down this beautiful long hill in the oldest park in Rochester. This is hole number seven at the 2011 AM World Championships. And this is your lead card from the April. Well, here we are at the green of number seven. And I like it, Liz, continuing on with this routine. Oh yeah, this is a hard hole too. Again, we said it was 528 feet downhill, but it's playing much shorter than that and very tricky too. You know, people are throwing big hyzers at the basket. And we're here and I can see now the jubilation over there on hole number five yeah, and eighth. And look at Pete. Oh, as Pete gives it a great bid. You can't go with this thing aggressive with that shoe no, absolutely right behind not. the basket. You know, that looks pretty close too. I'd give it 15, 20 feet and you're in, a, in the woods, Billy. No doubt. Here's Dylan Horst, and I can't tell from here, but it does look like there's a creek running back through there, so that has to come into play. All right, Dylan, he's playing, he's been playing safe all day, on, especially on these approaches. I expect him to lay it right under the oh, bucket. Oh, he's going at this one. Oh. Solid there he is, right underneath the shadow of the basket. Now on the left side, you'll see crawling under the tree, and you know, I think Kenny was surprised it got that far. He was just trying to lay it up. Just, again, take another easy three on a tough hole. Well, he's making this one into an easy three, too. He lays it up right underneath the pin. You can see Dan moving in, and Dan was a good 25 feet in the air when he hit those trees, Liz. I mean, he had the juice flowing up there on the tee pad, apparently. Yeah, he sure did. You know, he seems pretty calm and confident. He's not nervous about this next shot at all. Well, he's probably been over there several times. He knows the property in Rochester, obviously better than any of these guys, even though he's only been here maybe a handful of times. It's more than these guys. Yep, he is a local boy through and through. I'm sure he's deuced every hole on this course. Well, he looks like he may have a window there. He is eyeing this thing up, Liz. I'm gonna call that every bit of 47 feet, three and a quarter inches, and it's looking like hot putt ability. I don't know, Billy, that might be 50. There's Dan Hastings for a huge birdie. Oh, and he nailed it. He's feeling it. Whew. He's got the line that's two big, huge putts. And you can see him making the surge. This has been lead card action. If you want to see how Dan finished, you just go to the PDGA.com. They've got the scores right there above the video area. Wow, what excitement, Liz. Now here comes Pete Ulibar, just looking again, going through that full routine. Yeah, he is not afraid, and it, it's a mechanism that they use to help help themselves calm down and feel confident about the putts. Well, the floor is his. It's his, his opportunity to do that, and I just love to see it consistent. All right, I expect it to go in. Up, in, and a solid play there by Pete Ulibar. He'll card his easy three. The rest of the guys there 
will come in and tap some easy ones in and trying to control his emotions over there. Really excited is Dan Hastings. He's got a huge gallery out here watching him. And this is the lead card again from Thursday afternoon. Oh, what a beautiful park. I love the elevation. I wish I had an opportunity to get to a park like that in my area on a daily basis. Now, we were lucky enough to run down the senior grandmasters and the leader of the event. Here's Liz Carr with the I'm on Cloud 9 post-round interviews. All right, we're at the 2011 PDGA Amateur and Junior World Championship. This includes grandmasters as well. We're at Ellison Park with the lead card of grandmasters. Michael Brayton, you kind of have a good story. You shot a 49 out here today. How did you manage that? Um, good putting, I think. Good I heard there was good a good putting. Can you tell us the story about the good hole on putting? Uh, good putt on hole number 10? Hole 10, that was just a, a lazy S turn putt about 75 feet out and just kind of slowly went into the basket. And I was skipping on down to get my disc out of the basket. It was exciting. <laughs> With a smile. Yeah. It was exciting. <laughs> Very good. Mark Hauser, you're shooting pretty good. You're right up on the lead card. How are, how are you feeling about your game so far? Really good. Everything's working. And uh, it's been my first world where I've sort of gotten off to a good start, so I'm really happy. All right. Good for you. And uh, Robert Martinick, our leader right now by two strokes, you got to be feeling pretty confident going into tomorrow's round. I am. Yeah, I'm feeling great. It's been a, I love the courses here and I really enjoyed it, Allison, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Are you worried about anybody from that second card sneaking up on you? These two guys. Yeah, these two? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk Smith down there, do you think you'll be able to hold on to the lead card for tomorrow's round? I'm hoping. I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to. But. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, thanks so much for your guys' time. Best awesome. of luck, you do, luck to you do guys tomorrow at, uh, as you'll be playing at what park? Genesee, Genesee Valley, Valley. 8.30. All right, this is the lead card for the Grand Masters. They played Ellison Park today. They're going to be looking at Genesee Valley tomorrow. This is the 2011 PDGA Amateur and Junior World Championships coming to you from Rochester, New York. Woo! All right. Thank you. right on. Well, all right, I'm standing here with the tournament leader right now by three strokes, Kenny Glassman out of Gurney, Illinois. Thanks for catching up with us, Kenny. Thank you very much for having me. It's fun to watch you play out there. Now, you're leading right now by three strokes. You were tied going into this morning's round. You have a three-stroke cushion right now over Dan Hastings and Pete Ulibarri. What's going through your mind right now? Just try to play my own game of golf, not really worry what everyone else is doing, just focus on my game, try to throw some good shots and make some pots. All right, how many times have you practiced this course? I've played this course once uh, earlier in the week. Um, feels pretty nice, it's wide open, um, beautiful weather all week, so I can't complain. Yeah, all right, well, are we gonna see another amazing shot like you had on hole number six this morning? Uh, I can only hope for something like that, that par four hole six. You know, my Firebird just kind of jumped up into the basket. I was more surprised than anybody when they now, told me Now, how far away in. were you when that happened? It's probably about 200 to 250 feet away, just throwing a spike shot, and it just hit right next to the basket and jumped in, so that was All right, he's skipping the birdie and going for the eagle, everybody. This is your leader after three rounds here at Amateur Worlds. This is Kenny Glassman. Thanks for watching the Cloud9 post-round interview. We'd like to thank our sponsors, the PDGA. Gotta go, gotta throw. Cloud9. Voodoo Disc Golf Bags. And Sun King Disc Sports. Without our sponsors, we wouldn't be able to provide you any of this coverage. If you need some disc apparel or merchandise, please visit any of our sponsors. Well, what another beautiful day of weather, another beautiful day of golf. Can it get any better, Liz? No, I don't think it can, Billy. And I, I don't think these boys are complaining one bit about the possible threat of rain that never really happened today. Well, the lead card action is what we showed you today. We're not going to change that up tomorrow. We got the lead card. Where are they going to be at tomorrow afternoon? Parma Park. Lots of OB, lot, some elevation changes, a really challenging course. Very much danger uh, on that track. Anything could happen. This lead card, ha we're not sure if they're going to stay together through tomorrow. You'll know because you can go to pdga.com. You can check the leaderboard. We'll see you tomorrow with one of the last days of coverage. Only two rounds left before the final nine. Here's the 2011 Amateur and Junior World Championships.